What I'm saying to you is this, whatever caused this universe, I believe, didn't have a cause, didn't begin to exist. So whatever caused this universe to exist has always existed. If it's always existed, that means it never began to exist. If it never began to exist, then there is no cause. Hence the term uncaused cause. Because you started off your premise with um, everything that has started to exist began to exist, must yeah. have a cause, whereas I'm just working within the framework of everything that has a cause has a cause before it. So mine is more simplistic, but it doesn't work. Not really, because your cause needs an explanation. When you look at using the sandcast examples, you're using a localised fluctuation in entropy to then extrapolate that backwards to across the universe. No, no. So actually, in the, in the universal terms, the chances of the universe having been created previously actually goes up as you go back because actually all the science points towards that. You, the analogy I gave wasn't very good because I was just trying to explain... Okay, all right. That's, that's, sorry, I'm so, dealing with so, it. Are you going to rescind your sandcastle example? All I meant by the prison cell analogy is that you don't need to do scientific experiments in a lab to come up with the first cause argument. You just need to have logic to, to do... So, so you're saying someone in a prison cell yeah. would come to the conclusion that they were created? Yeah, they must do. I'll have I would agree. Because, yeah. yeah I would, I would not agree for you. Yeah, natural fit so, we like that. I mean, Continue. The DNA test. Right. If I did a DNA test, that would be proof. Right. Right now, all I can give you is testimony. All I can give you is my wife's character and all of these things to know that they're my daughters. Right. Do you understand? So a belief isn't necessarily unicorns and um, spaghetti monsters. Yeah. yeah? So belief, belief is a result of reason. So I believe a creator exists. Yeah. And I have reasons to support why I believe that. Yeah. I can't prove to you, and I would never make the claim that a creator exists. Because if I say a creator exists, I'm required to prove it. Because I'm making a claim. Mm -hmm. Now, would you, would you say, don't, do you believe a creator exists? I'm sure. Right, so you don't know if a creator exists, or you don't believe a creator exists? What would you say? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Now, the reason why you don't know is because I'm assuming you're using the scientific method to understand things? Observation really, and all not, that. I'm not particularly enlightened kind of thinking myself. But. So if you were seeking God's presence or God's existence, what method or tool are you that's, using? That's, that brings me back to the original question. I don't think that there would be proof in the world. I don't think, if God could, I don't think he would provide 100% scientific proof that he exists, because otherwise... I, I, I would agree. Belief would not mean anything, because it's like believing one plus one equals two. No one worships the number two. Mm. Um, because there's 100% proof. Well I, well, I would say that if there was 100% proof of God's existence, that, so no one's in any doubt, there would be no free will. I, I would argue that. Yes. Because the idea of belief is what? You've studied the, the reasons mm. and the propositions that have been put forward, you've analysed them, you've contemplated and reflected upon them, and you've concluded either you accept that or believe that, well, it's not brother, yeah, or you reject that and don't believe that. Mm. So I'm with you, so we kind of agree with each other. Yeah. I want to pick up on... I'm trying to understand the point of the question. Yeah, it, it's a bit unusual. I don't so mind. You, you mentioned earlier that... A little bit of Trump, Tom Jones, we don't mind. Yeah. Go on. I like Tom Jones. So, you mentioned that... For, I'll take the example of your, your daughter's... Yeah, go back yeah, to yeah, go on. So you said analogy. you don't have... You said that belief is having 0% proof. No. But you can uh, let, let me reiterate. To believe in something is to accept that something to be true with or without evidence. Okay. So you can believe something with evidence, you can believe something without evidence. I think that the, I believe you're this, drawing in the middle, you're saying there's a difference, you either got no evidence or you got all the no, evidence. No, no. For example, your wife's character, for example, um, that's somewhat evidence, but it's not conclusive. It's just no, no, I, di I didn't, uh, what did I say? I didn't say proof, did I, or evidence, I said reason. Oh yeah, but, but proof... Um, I'm not giving you proof. To, to, work, to work with the examples, I think the example you gave is very useful. A DNA test is not 100% complete. I would agree. But it's 99.9. .9, I would so say... That, a very good reason. But I would say this, if, for example, right now I've not had a DNA test yet with my daughters. So right now I can't prove to you that they're my daughters because I'd need to produce the DNA test. Would you agree? Okay, yeah, go on. How else could I prove those daughters are my daughters without a DNA test? But only you did this. But this is the thing. So I, you no, no. How else could I prove to you my daughters are my daughters? I don't think you can prove it, but I'm gonna. I want to argue with the word proof. No, but other than DNA test, 
I agree with the proof. I, there's other reasons. So you can. No, no, no. Reasons is not proof. But a DNA test is just another reason, is it not? No, no. Okay, if I was to, to prove my daughters are my daughters, what if it had a DNA test? Would you say that's proof that my daughters are my daughters or not? It's 99.9. I would agree with you. I would agree with you. And I'll be honest with you. The reasons why I believe my daughters are my daughter, I would weigh them stronger than a DNA test. Yeah, so your wife's character might be... Stronger. 99.99. But still not proof. Yeah. Still, you wouldn't say that's, so what no, I would say it's reason, as you said. So what would be proof for it? I would say... It doesn't the, even exist. No. So, so what I'm saying is that uh, belief is, is not like no belief and 100% belief. It's more of a slider. Belief is, I'll explain again to you, acceptance of something to be true with or without evidence. So, for example, I said, do you believe I've got a phone in my pocket? You could believe it or not, innit? You could say, I don't believe you. And then I say, well, look, here's my phone. Do you believe me now? You could say, yeah, I believe you. <laughs> right. right. So you believe me now. So a belief doesn't require evidence. So if someone believes something, you can't ask them to prove that something. What you can do is ask them for reasons why they believe that something. Yeah? Yes. So if a Christian says, I believe Jesus is God, I can't ask them to prove it. Can I? Ridiculous. You can't prove that to me. I could ask you, why do you believe that? And they'll say, oh, because it says it in the Bible. Why do you believe the Bible? Oh, I believe the Bible is the word of God. Why do you believe the Bible is the word of God? Oh, because here in Timothy 2, 3, 16. So until we mine it, we mine it and we drill down, drill down until we get to the, to the bottom. And if the reason why they're believing can be refuted, we can refute that belief as delusion. Because we have evidence against what they're claiming. Yeah? So I would, that's how I would understand the term belief. Well, yeah, I, th I think it works, but then because you said belief is, is having something and whether or not you have proof of it. Yeah. So I think the, the one type of religious belief would surely be that you don't have proof of it. Because if, if no, we didn't God, mention proof. I didn't mention proof. No, no, but you said a, a belief can... I'm, I'm just clarifying the difference between rel religious belief and believing... like No, no, like a religious belief, belief that man landed on the moon, belief that we evolved from a common ancestor are all the same. There's no difference. The principle remains the same. You want to believe we evolved from a common ancestor? Tell me why you believe we evolved from a common ancestor. You're going to give me DNA, you're going to give me fossil record, then I'm going to say to you, well, there's five different models of evolution and each one uses the same data. So they've got the same data, fossil record, DNA, five conclusions. Yeah? Okay, cool. So it's still not proof. But you can, you can explain to me why you believe this is the way and you give me the reasons for that. Do you get it? So, do you believe man landed on the moon? Yeah, why do you believe that? Well, uh, we're told in history that, in the, you know, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and all that, it was on the TV. That's why you believe, that's sound reason. Unless someone can prove man didn't land on the moon, you can accept that reason. I still think it's a different kind of belief. Not same, same. Can I, can I, can I, yeah. Tell me why... I'd love a coffee. Tell me why you think I'm wrong. Uh, why? Because the principle is the same. I'll give you my example. Oh, oh you're going to tell me why, sorry. So, so I would say that if you ask, like, um, why do we have a universal common ancestor? And someone would cite to you different scientific, um, I say scientific, uh, reasons via which they believe that. So they, would, they might cite your DNA test. They might cite you a theory of evolution. Or why you land on the moon. They might cite you some physics. They might cite you some history. But all of that evidence still fits into the umbrella of the scientific method. Whereas religious belief, you don't do a, a complete disagree. Test to see that, that complete disagree. Uh, God I completely disagree. You do a scientific test that man landed on the moon. I said within within the scientific umbrella. So I'm, I think it's All a right. different kind of evidence. Shall I tell you why I believe a creator exists? And I won't leave logic, reason, or intellect behind. Yeah. Sure. All right. I believe a creator exists because I believe that everything that begins to exist requires a cause. And I believe the universe began to exist, therefore it requires a cause. I believe that cause needs to be uncaused, although we have the problem of infinite regression. Yes, uh, yeah, I understand. So I believe in an uncaused cause of all that exists. Now, this uncaused cause of all that exists, I believe, needs intelligence to have created all of this stuff. And I believe this uncaused cause of all that exists needs power to create all of this stuff. So I believe in the existence of an uncaused cause of the universe and everything that exists, which is intelligent and all powerful. Okay. Did I leave reason? Did I leave logic? Did I leave the scientific method? You know, you said that we, we go further and further and further back and we find like the foundational belief. So if I ask you, why do you believe that things that are caused well, well, are necessarily can't have a cause themselves? Oh, okay, because if you can show me anything in this world that you're aware of, that comes into existence or begins to exist without a cause, present it. Ah, but then you're using the scientific method again. You're I, saying, I just said to you, I haven't left the scientific method. No, but you're, you're citing the cause of the universe, so, so everything, and then inside the universe is the scientific method. And you're saying if one domino falls, another domino has to cause it. Right? Of course. And, and so on. Cause and effect. And you're saying that, that scientific causality 
the, that that exists inside the universe also has to apply to the universe itself. So you're saying within the bubble of the universe, there's this no. Well, you'd have to then. No, no, no. And it also applies to outside the universe. What you would then is answer the question: Why you're offering special pleading when it comes to the universe? When we know everything, we know that it comes to exist, begins to exist, requires a cause. Now, all of a sudden, because of the universe, you don't know the cause, you apply a special pleading that it didn't have a cause. I would ask you why you present special pleading as a logical fallacy at this point. I, no, I'm saying that. Uh, no, but you are. You're presenting that you are. You, you're implying. You're implying that the universe is outside of what we know of. So what we know. Everything that begins to exist has a cause, and we know the universe. Well, we, I believe the universe began to exist. Therefore, according to what we know, it must have a cause. And what that cause is, we don't know. This is why atheists will say at this point, we don't know what it is, acting as if they're being honest. And the problem they have is they're not being honest. Because at this point, they've got to understand the assumption of the scientific method is what? The assumption in the philosophy of science is naturalism, meaning everything has a natural explanation. Even if we don't know what it is, it must be natural, which for me is a false assumption, because you can't prove that. No, I agree. Now, which tells me now, if a creator does exist, and that great creator does supersede what we know, does supersede the natural, does come into the realm of the supernatural, science is blind to it. Science can't measure it. Science can't recognize it. So if you're someone relying on observation and testing and empirical methods, you cannot use science to prove God or disprove God. Because science doesn't recognize the existence of the metaphysical, the supernatural. That is, that, that is where we agree. Yeah. So once you have that, once you get to that point, then you cannot use science to prove God or disprove God. And I would never do that. What did I say? I said, I believe in the existence of a creator for this reason, for this reason, for this reason, for this reason. Okay. For you to challenge my belief, you need to now refute my reasons. Yeah? Okay. So for example, if you produce something that does begin to exist without a cause, you could then challenge my original premise, original premise, isn't it? But I know you can't produce anything. You might go to the quantum level, you might talk about these quarks appearing and this and the other, okay. but even that, we don't know whether that's just, we're just seeing them at that point. So say that there is a cause, but we just don't understand. Uh, exactly, okay. right. So that, that's my saying. Now, a belief, that's my belief, yeah? So what I've, done, I've come to the belief in an all-powerful, all-intelligent creator of all that exists without ever leaving the realm of logic, reason, or intellect. Not once. I didn't mention Qur'an, I didn't mention miracles, I didn't mention faith, did I? Okay, if I, so we'll take, we'll take the cause the cause argument, because it's, it's the one that we're all familiar with, right? So the, the problem that I would have with the cause argument is you start off, your first premise is everything that is caused must have a cause itself. Everything that begins to exist has okay. a cause. Okay, so that, that's the slightly different version that comes after Augustine. Well, well, well can I, that's what I said, okay, so... Well, well, well then, you'd say God exists, right? Did I, would I say God begins to exist? Well, at some point you would have to say that... Why? Why would you... Because then you'd have the problem of infinite regression. Because if God began to exist, then we'd have to find its cause, and then we'd have to find its cause, and we'd have to find its cause. Until we have an original cause that's uncaused, we'll never start the process. You say God is not just has always existed because that implies time. You're saying God exists full stop. Yes. There's never been a point in. See, I can't use time to describe it. No, 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 I understand. What, I just, what I'm saying to you is this: whatever caused this universe, I believe, didn't have a cause, didn't begin to exist. So whatever caused this universe to exist has always existed. If it's always existed, that means it never began to exist. If it never began to exist, then there is no cause. Hence, the term uncaused cause. Yes. So. Another question I have is, why do you think infinite regression is actually a problem? Why do I believe infinite regression is an actual problem? Why would infinite regression not be a suitable explanation? Do you understand the problem of infinite regression? I do, but I don't, I don't think... Explain to, me, oh, explain to me infinite regression, just so we're on the same le okay, so wavelength. Everything that has a cause has to have a cause, has to have a cause. And if you don't admit that at some point the chain starts and has an, un an uncaused cause, then the chain goes on forever. No, how do we get to where we are? What do you mean by that? Oh, you mean why are we here now? Because we'd still be in the process of getting here. We wouldn't be able to. Uh, if we couldn't exist until that thing that caused us to exist existed, and that thing couldn't exist until that thing that caused it existed, and that couldn't exist until that thing caused it. If you keep going backwards, you, you, you've got the problem of infinite regression. You can't. You, you, the problem needs to be solved. This is why even Hawkins talks about an uncaused cause. Even though we don't know what it is, they don't say it's God. This is why atheists will say, oh, it's energy or whatever it is. But you have to have an uncaused cause of all that exists. I don't, I don't agree with that, because that sounds a lot to me like Zeno's paradox. You're saying that everything that has... What's Zeno's paradox? It's, it's the idea that... So if you've got a runner, and you've got a, an arrow, and you shoot the arrow at the runner, right? So the runner runs 10 metres. Uh, let's say, that, sorry, the runner runs 1 metre, the arrow goes 10. So the arrow is going 10 times as fast. But then the runner runs 10 centimetres, and the arrow goes a metre. 
and so the arrow is always catching up but never actually gets there. So what, and similarly, what you've just said is the causes are always getting to this point in time, but they never actually get there. No, it can't get to this point in time until we start it. See, I, I don't agree with that. Oh, you don't have to agree with it. I, I, you ask, I'm telling you what I believe. It's a very unusual argument we're having because we both agree that that there's. All right, I'll make it easy for you. Exists. Okay, I'll make it easy for you. But, so we have to wait. We, just just to take everyone else, we have the same conclusion. But we don't have. You think there are reasons, and I'm saying that reasons would defeat the point. No, I disagree because, like what you're doing now, you can challenge my reasons. I don't mind. Yeah. You can't prove my reasons wrong. You can just disagree with them. I don't mind that. It's your, pro your, your prerogative. You can prove them wrong logically, surely. I mean, you no, just... you can't. How can you prove that? Okay. okay. I mean, okay. You've all right. You've relied on logic. Let me use the example of the sniper firing the shot. I've used this before, but I'll use it again. No, you... I'm not familiar with it. Uh, okay. Let's say there's a sniper and he needs to take a shot. But before he, take, he, needs to take, he takes that shot, he needs to take permission of his superior officer. Okay. So he goes, permission to take the shot, sir. Before the superior officer can give permission to take that shot, he needs to take permission from his superior officer. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And so forth. If everyone keeps seeking permission and we don't have somebody to say, take the shot, the sniper will never take the shot, will he? Yeah, I agree. Right. Okay. So imagine the, this, the Big Bang, if you like. Yeah? <coughs> if, if the creator requires a cause, 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 cause to get to where we are, yeah? Then until we have a, a start point, yeah, even if you want to go five creators back if you like, yeah, but there has to be at some point an uncaused cause that started the lot. And that cause is what we call God, Allah, the creator, whatever you wish to use. Okay. Now using Occam's razor, we can remove all these little gods in between because we're talking about we want the creator. Yep. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why I would say the problem of infinite regression cannot be solved. I don't believe. If you can solve it, solve it. I don't think the information is a problem. How does a sniper take the shot if he never gets permission? Okay, let's, let's say you, you write down a big, like, uh, a shopping list of the chain of events that lead. So right now there's the sniper, and then there's all the superior officers, and then there's creation of the country they're at war with, and then there's... No, 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 no. And then blunt away. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 you, you go all the way back in You just changed the paradigm. You, you might say... No, you just changed the paradigm. I'm, I'm just... I'll give you an example. These are the dominoes. I'll give you an example. Infinite regression means what? Infinite. Okay. So I'm talking about a sniper, yep. his commanding officer, his commanding officer, his commanding officer, Infinitely okay. going back, okay. it so it's an infinite further further. going. No, so it's an, an infinite chain going backwards. Mm -hmm. Now, if that infinite chain is going backwards, you, how are you going to get forwards? But this doesn't matter whether you start at the. Uh, if you start at the very end, we can't. There's no end. It's infinite. But it doesn't matter that you start at the very end. But there is no end. It's infinite. Well, that's the, you're, you're you're assuming that you have to start. Is there an end to infinite? But, no, you can't. You can't do that. You can't say that. If, if it's, it's an infinite chain of events, you just made a circular argument. You said it's a, it's, a, it's an infinite chain of events. Therefore, you can't start at the end, and you can't. No, no. Uh, what, no. What did I say? What did I say? This is what, the whole point of what I'm saying is this. The problem of infinite regression is you cannot regress infinitely. Because if you inf if you regress infinitely, that means you're always going to be keeping going backwards. Seeking permission, seeking permission, seeking permission, seeking permission. Where's the shot? The shot's not going to get fired until someone says, take the shot and then it'll come back at the chain. I don't, I don't think that's the way that, that events in time would happen. because. Yes, really? You're completely correct. But if you look at it as in where is the first cause, you will have a problem. Do you accept one thing? Let's accept one principle. Let's forget creator and stuff. Right now. Let's keep to the sniper. Do you accept if you have a sniper asking for permission to take the shot and the chain of command is infinite going backwards seeking permission? Yes. Will he ever get permission? No. But right. I'm, no. Wait. Can I give my... No. Do, no. Look, okay. No. Is that your answer to that particular point? I'm saying no in the way you've conceived it. If I give the way I've conceived it, you're absolutely right. If you look for permission, you try and explain an event like that, then I agree with you. You get the problem of infinite regression, and you do have to have a first course. But if you just take one point, if you just say, right, here's where we're going to start looking at it. How can you? And go, well, that's how the way that every single scientist... With infinite, you can't do that. If you were to say, why is this tree growing? It came from an acorn. You wouldn't go back in time and say, well, why does the carbon exist in the first place? Was it made in stars? You wouldn't go that far back to try and explain something. You always start at a certain point and then build upwards. If you're claiming that oak tree's infinite, of course you would. No, 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 no. What I mean is that when you're looking for the, a chain of events and looking for a cause, you don't go far back to the first cause because the first cause would always be the Big Bang and then God and then... And then... No, no, because look, whatever cause you go back to, whatever that first cause is for you has to be uncaused, hence the term first cause. I, I don't agree. What, what, how do you define first cause? The thing that causes the chain of events you're looking at. Right, and what caused... looking at. Right, and what caused that? Well, then you're looking at a different chain of events. Why? Okay, if I, again, with, with the tree example, an acorn falls on the ground, right. and then it grows into an oak tree. 
So you would say, if, if you're trying to explain why this tree exists, you would go all the way back to that acorn. To the acorn. And there is a different chain of events that says, well, the acorn came from another tree. And I agree with you, so on and so forth, when you compare right. all the different events together, right. you get that first uh, first cause problem. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at a chain of events and you just start time from now and, time, and the clock starts running, Okay. There's, there's no reason why you have to have the problem oh, there, like that. Sorry? You know, the, uh, no. the problem that you're having is that you're trying to deal with the problem of regression by making an arbitrary starting point. Yes. And you're just making it up. You're saying, let's just start from somewhere. Because actually you know that you can't go back to the beginning. Because in the model, where if you're regression, there is no beginning. And the question being put to you is, can you cross an infinite series of past events? And the answer to that is you can't. I'm saying that there's no reason why you couldn't just add one more no, no, cause up. There is. And the reason why? is is because there's an infinite series of past events. History, if you want to put it that way, goes on infinitely into the past. You know that you can't you cannot get to this stage if you're trying to cross an infinite series of events. It's just, it's just illogical. See, to I, do I that. disagree. The reason why I disagree is if you if you have the list of dominoes. And then you said that domino right at the end has to be caused by God. But what's There's making what's to, you, wait, what's to stop you as a historian from adding another domino and another domino? Because as long as the domino that you add beforehand is okay setting off the next domino, you can just keep adding dominoes. No, because so no, 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 because the, the, if the domino that started it yeah. had a cause, that's not God yes, that's for us. Well, Okay, so this is that's not our start point. <laughs> the difference in our thinking is you're looking for an explanation of the entire chain, and I'm looking for an explanation of just the last event that happened. So the reason, so because you're, um, it's just I don't think we're arguing. I don't even necessarily disagree, it's just we're conceiving of it differently. So I'll try and explain like this. You're saying there's the entire chain and it must have a start, and, and that's God, right? Whereas I'm saying, if I'm trying to explain the chain from this point, there's nothing wrong logically with me saying, well, there's another one, and there's another one, and I keep going back. And then how far back do you go until God exists? Well, I don't think you would have to admit it. No, but, but then Occam's Razor, Occam's razor would, no, but Occam's razor would kick in here then and say, well, why are you making things so complicated? Just get to the first cause. Why are you going, forget the See, I, whatever's in between. Regardless of whether you think Occam's razor is a good method to use in an argument, I don't think Occam's razor... You don't think so? I don't, I don't think your argument is the one that would be supportive of Occam's razor. Why not? Because you started off your premise with um, everything that has started to exist began to exist, must yeah. have a cause, whereas I'm just working within the framework of everything that has a cause has a cause before it. So mine is more simplistic, but it doesn't work. Not really, because your cause needs an explanation. No, what I mean is that all the chain, all the events that happen in my idea of of history work with the exact same physics. It's just they have a, there's something that happened and there's. A cause. Okay, I make, I make it easy for you. Whereas yours has got a slightly different. I make it easy for you. Creation exists, we believe. Creation couldn't exist without a creator. Okay. Yeah. If that creator wasn't created, say that creator was created, yeah? Okay. Whilst it wasn't created, this creation couldn't exist, yeah? It would need to be created. But that creator needs that creator for it to exist, yeah? So if that creator didn't exist, that creator wouldn't exist and we wouldn't exist, yeah? Yes. So then that creator needs a creator as well. So when we go back again. Now if that creator exists, then them three creators can exist and the creation can exist. If that creator doesn't exist, yeah? But we're going backwards here, so we're going backwards all the way, infinitely. You, you, you can keep going backwards. No, but you can't because you're never going to get the original, get the original creator. Uh, but this is the problem, so you're, you're assuming that you need to, to the chain has to stop at some point. This, where, where are you getting this idea of the chain? Infinite has to stop? regression. The, the thing is, you're, answer, smart, you're answering two different questions. I agree with you. Go on. Go on. <clears throat> what the point of the discussion here is the ultimate cause of here. You're, you're not asking that question. You're asking, let's find a cause and be satisfied with whatever answer we come up with. And that's not the discussion being had here. We're talking about the ultimate cause of everything that exists. You want to arbitrarily stop the cause somewhere because you know the inevitable conclusion is that you cannot traverse an infinite series of past events. Salam. That's inevitable. That's well, infinite regression. So, in a way to make yourself, I'm not, I'm not belittling you, no, 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 to no, make no. yourself feel better. I know, I know, I know. Starting it from somewhere, because you want to explain things as we know them. But what you're not dealing with is dealing with the ultimate question. And this is the ultimate question, the existence of something that's uncaused, that started everything, the chain. So, you can stop where you like, you can stop there and say I'm satisfied with that for myself and live your life that way. But that's never going to get you to the ultimate reason of why are we here and answer the big questions that are important. Because the existential questions are the really important questions. Your, your response, let's start somewhere arbitrarily, is just a way of explaining in a, a, a system bound by the universe how the universe comes into existence. And you need to be, I think you need to think deeper into this. And that's, that's why you've got to deal with the question of infinite regression and not just sort of arbitrarily no, start no, it from somewhere. I get, I get, Do you understand what I'm I saying can, to you? Yeah, I'm going to... 
is it all right if I go back to the start and explain why we we had this discussion in the first place? Oh, sorry, sorry. You can go back to the first course, no problem. We, we <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate. He's done me there. <laughs> so we, we started off with, um, do we think there's proof of God? And I said that if God would create the world, the nature of belief would be such that if you created absolute 100% proof, there'd be no belief involved in it. There'd be no question of faith. There'd be no question of devotion because, you know, it's like believing whether the sky is blue or not. Something that has 100% proof doesn't inspire any any belief, any faith, any any morality. So I said that if God creates the world, then it will be in his interest and in humanity's interest not to put proof there. And so when I look at these problems... I agreed, I agreed with you. Yeah, yeah, so we agreed on that. But then... Um, one of the, the arguments that we've had is, is the first cause argument, and you've given the... No, what I, I, what I said to you, all I've said to you is my belief, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Why, and why I believe it. So I believe if you're going to say what caused God, mm -hmm. then you would have to ask what caused that cause, and I believe you have the, now you now encounter the problem of infinite re regression. Now you're saying you don't. I'm, I'm saying that infinite regression is not a problem. Well, you haven't established that. You, yeah, exactly. You're, 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 you're at a start point. What you do with it? See, if you have an infinite regression, you have no start point. I give you, you mentioned Occam's Razor earlier. I'll give you an argument by the earlier 20th century philosopher called Bertrand Russell. He said, does everyone understand the concept of entropy? Go on. The idea that, you know, it's, it's, um, if you build a big sand castle on the beach, it's eventually going to wear down and go back to the level of the rest of the beach. Because that's the way that time works. It wears things down and everything reaches the same energy state. And it's nothing special. So he said that if you look at the universe now, today, it's got slightly less entropy, sorry, the, the status has got slightly more entropy than yesterday. Because yesterday that sand castle was standing really tall and today it's got blown a bit down by the wind. And eventually in the far future we'll get to a point where the sand castle has gone completely and right at the start of the it's universe that sand is entirely built up. So if you were to compare the two days, today and yesterday, today has more entropy, it's closer to the final end of the universe, and yesterday has less entropy, it's further away. Well, that's then the chances... Wait, 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 the, the doctor spoke the, second. The chances of oh, the universe starting to exist yesterday are lower than if they start to exist today. So there is more probability then the that the universe has started to exist today when we all woke up and we all, we all have these memories because that's how the universe was created. There is more chance of that than there is of the universe starting off at the lowest state of entropy and reaching it how it is so, now. So the reason it's not a good argument is because actually you're using a sandcastle example which seems to make sense because the sandcastle is going from an organised to a disorganised state. If you took at the universe, because we're talking about the universe, if you go backwards in time with the universe, and then we know the universe is expanding, the particles, if, if you want to call galaxies, the particles in the argument are getting further and further away, so the entropy is... If you go, if you go back, as time goes on, the part, the, everything comes closer together, becomes more organised, and when you get to the singularity, everything else actually is together with minimal ability to move. So less options for movement within that okay. entity. So actually the argument is the opposite way around. As you go back in time in the universe, there are greater chances because entropy because everything's breaking down actually since that time. What you're seeing here is a fluctuation in the entropy in a certain area, and you're thinking that this is a sign I, that previously I disagree with that because this, the second law of thermodynamics is such that entropy always increases in a closed system. And if the universe is a closed system, then it must be the case that entropy is increasing over time. What you've mentioned, the synthesis of particles way back in the start of the universe, the synthesis of particles is not, um, not, is not making not, not the universe the more organised. Because uh, originally when the universe started, it, it was just a soup of energy, and then particles come about. But that part, those particles no, come no, about as a result not, of that's energy what I'm saying. dissipating. Not as a result what, of energy what, the, what is the singularity? Let's say, let's say we understand. What, what do you say the singularity is? What are you saying that it is? It's a different physics term. You tell me what you mean and then... So, what I'm saying to you is, but as we go back in time, everything that's in the universe comes closer and closer together. Right. Do you disagree with that? No, I don't. Okay. I agree with that. So as we come closer and to closer to together, things are more organised. So what does that mean in terms of entropy? That uh, it's got the lowest state of entropy. Okay. So you're saying entropy increases as time goes on. This is the yes. second order. This is exactly what I'm saying to you. As you go back in time, everything actually becomes more and more organised because there are less options to move that particular piece of that matter or energy in any particular way. And when you get to singularity, there's maximal organisation no, and that's, denseness. That's, that's, the reason that's not correct is because you're assuming that when things are further apart and they can't interact with each other, then there's no there's no chance for anything happening. So your sand castle, for example, yep. the, sand car the sand is compacted together in the shape of a castle. Yeah. That's why you say that um, when the wind blows, then these particles are further apart the next time. Yep. It's exactly the same example. But you've got, you're, you're using an example because something is now uh, was, was dense and now is becoming less dense. Let's use that term. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that's scattered, and that means that actually the, the entropy is uh, de uh, increasing. Now I'm saying that's how the universe was. So initially it was all 
singularity, dense energy, matter, whatever you want to call it, an infinite mass, infinite density, essentially nothingness, so however you want to call that. And then there was an explosion, and then all these particles or matter or energy, whatever you want to call it, started to spread out. Okay. So entropy is going up from that point. Yeah, I agree. And in the universe, the entropy has gone up from the beginning. Right. What you're doing here is yeah. when you look at using the sandcast examples, you're using a localized fluctuation entropy to then extrapolate that backwards to across the universe. No, no. So actually, in the, in the universal terms, the chances of the universe having been created previously actually goes up as you go back. Because actually all the science points was there. You, the analogy I gave wasn't very good because I was just trying to explain. Okay. Right. That's so, that, sorry, I'm so, dealing with so, it. Are you going to rescind your sandcastle example? Yeah, I'll, re I'll rescind my sandcastle. Good man. I mean, That's what we, we like that. The sandcastle. Uh, bring a, can you bring an uh, example that actually works? If I give it... Uh, okay, I'm going to use the sandcastle again. If you oh. put the sandcastle in, the, in, a, in a box, a glass box, yeah. and you just shake the box slightly, so the reason why it's important to have a closed system is because it doesn't have any outside uh, influences on it. Then it, the, the sand level over time is going to level out because you know particles will slide down and, and the, the slight vibration will move it. And the same with the universe. If the universe is a closed bubble, then everything in the universe is eventually going to reach the same energy state. So if you've got a hot running a hot bath, of, um, running a hot tap in a bath is another classic example of entropy. You run the hot tap, then you've got a hot part of the bath and a cold part of the bath, but over time, it all equalizes to become a, a lukewarm temperature. That's the course of ent entropy over time, right? So, um, and the universe will follow the exact same same principle. You have some parts of the universe that are extremely hot in the middle of a star, and you have some parts of the universe that are extremely cold on the coldest asteroid. And over time, uh, the energy of the universe will dissipate such that there's the same energy concentration everywhere and nothing else will happen. Because from that point, uh, according to the laws of thermodynamics, there'll be no more interactions between particles. And that's the end of the universe. And what Bertrand Russell said was that um, there is more probability of us being... Free. If you've got, like, the low entropy down here, so the start of the universe, and high entropy over here, so the end of the universe, Bertrand Russell mm. said you're more likely to, for the universe to be created here when it's almost about to finish than to be created right at the start with maximum entropy and have to go through all of that chain first. I don't, I don't personally know whether I agree with that, but that's just an argument for the, the universe starting arbitrarily today and us all just waking up with memories that don't, didn't actually happen. Um, I, don't, I don't believe that. Though. You're not claiming that, are you? No, I'm not claiming it. I'm just saying. So why are you bringing yeah, it exactly. forward? That's the question. I'm, I'm just. It was. Yeah. <laughs> just response you know when you open response. tabs on Wikipedia yeah. and it's just like you end up reading. Be careful. Be careful, with Wikipedia, yeah. my friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. Be careful, man. Um, Always reference stuff. Who's saying what and why? <laughs> I remember the I tried my best. Sand yeah, yeah. But all right. Let me let me repeat myself. Go on. <laughs> Always check what you're reading on Wikipedia before you come to the park and start making claims about it. I read the book on that. I don't. I'm just, I'm, Wikipedia was an analogy. Again, like no, no, I have no issue with Wikipedia to search stuff out, but make sure you search stuff out and understand it before you come here and say it, and then act I like that. it's... I know. Yeah, that's so, all. That's, um, again, that's a way of just dealing with the infinite regression hmm. by making an arbitrary starting point. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't actually deal with the problem. Well, yes, but it does, it does require more logic to go into why infinite regression doesn't work. So, so move the argument on. No, but let's go back to what the principle of the argument was. What? You claimed that a belief in religious understanding or religious teachings, yeah. as I have, is somehow different to believing that uh, man evolved from a common ancestor or man landed yeah. on the moon and all of this stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. What was the reason for that? He said there's a difference in the belief, and I, and I said the principle remains the same. Whether Whatever your belief is, the principle remains the same, but you said no, it's different. So I'm, I'm interested to understand what's the difference between the belief man landed on the moon and me believing that uh, Muhammad is a messenger of God. What's the what's the the process? What, what do you think the process is different? How do you think the process is different? See, I believe the principle of what I said to you with regards to belief accepting something to be true, with or without evidence. Yeah. So I can't prove Muhammad was a messenger of God, but I can give you reasons why I believe it. And you can't prove man landed on the moon because you weren't there, and you, you can't take me to the moon and show me man landing there. But you can produce your reasons why. TVs, newspaper cuttings, or whatever. All right. I think there are different nature of belief. So I want to understand. Sorry, sorry. So just what I want to understand is this: you think there's a different process going on, and you think for somehow religious people have a different way of. What's the word process. I'd say it's the same intellect that you're using to drive it. Right. But I'd say that the reasons that you're looking for are slightly different. All right, and I want to understand that. Okay. So you know the first clause argument you gave. It's a purely logical argument. You could think of that in a dark room 
with no interaction with the rest of humanity ever. Right. A baby that's grown up in a prison cell could think of that because it's pure logic. Whereas if you were talking about where the land of man lands... Sorry, on, sorry, no, I would disagree with that because a baby that's grown up in a prison cell and didn't know anything, yeah, wouldn't be aware that nothing begins to exist without a cause. Why? How would a baby know that? In a prison cell. Why would a baby not know that? How would it know? It can know that by playing rock over system with itself. You can derive it through anything. How would it know? There's not something outside of its prison cell that does come into existence without cause. So you're telling me that you were taught that as opposed to believe it in a... No, I'm saying to you, how would a baby in a prison know or be aware that there's nothing outside of his prison cell? That... How would the baby know there's anything outside of his prison cell? No, but the baby exists. No, the baby... No, no, no. What you said is this. Even a baby in a prison cell that didn't interact with the outside world. Yeah, babies the world with me, like a teenager. Okay, a teenager. Okay. Just... A human being. Let's say Truman. Yeah? Okay. The Truman Show. Yeah, good one. All right? Okay. He's, he, he's, lo he's locked in a room okay. and doesn't know the outside world. Right. How would he have the premise that nothing comes into existence without a cause? Because he must know that, number one, he exists. Right. Number two, that there must be a reason why he exists. Right. And then therefore... How would he have to get the premise, though, that, no, that he doesn't know of anything that begins to exist without a cause, apart from what's around him? Because if something could begin to exist without a cause, there'd be other things popping into that prison cell. Yeah. You can tell by your environment. No, you, you, to be honest, you, you are correct, because he wouldn't even be aware of the world outside of the prison cell. Go on. But I don't think the analogy applies, because we're in this world. Well, all I'm, listen, I'm, my premise was based on what? I don't know of anything that begins to exist without a cause. All I meant by the prison cell analogy is that you don't need to do scientific experiments in a lab to come up with the first cause argument. You just need to have logic to, to do so, that. So you're saying someone in a prison cell yeah. would come to the conclusion that they were created? Yeah, they must do. I'd have, I would agree. Because, yeah. yeah I would, I would agree. For you. Yeah, natural fitter, so, we like that. I mean, Continue. So, so that is just pure logic. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are or unintelligent you are. It doesn't matter how much experience you've had. <laughs> provided you've got a rational mind, you can logically derive that. Whereas, for example, man landing on the moon, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are, if you've been locked in a cave since 1968, you will have no idea because regardless of how smart you are, you can't logically derive whether man has landed on the moon or not. You need to read a history textbook, or you need to go to a science museum and see the, the rocks, um, or, or yada, yada, yada. You're looking at empirical evidence. And so the difference in, in belief in God uh, that you've mentioned with the first cause argument and belief in man landing on the moon is what is empirical and what is purely logical. No, no, no. Both exactly the same. Both are based on reasons. Yes, but one reason is empirical and one is logical. My, my reasons were empirical. What did I say was an empirical? You're, you're, not saying, you're not saying that there has to be evidence. You're saying that logic... No, no, no. You gave the, uh, what did the I say? Of... I said belief required is a result of reason. That's what I said. So, I just want to ask, yeah. so is logic not evidence? No, logic is evidence. Okay. But it's a, different, it's a different kind of evidence. And logic is 100% evidence. That's what I'm saying. So logic, if, if I say um, I am either... Uh, uh, or let's use the sky. The sky is either red or blue. It's not red, therefore it's blue. That's a logical argument. It's 100% correct. No one in history can ever argue about that. Okay. No, don't go there. You will argue. Uh, empiric okay, we'll, we'll run with that argument more. So no, let's not. Argument. Let's not. But empiric yeah, but wait. It, it's not. a good one because empirically, I would have to then measure the wavelength of light coming. I'd have to measure the... the um, the energy level of the photons rebounding off the atoms in the sky. So there's a different kind of evidence that's empirical and logical. Yes. Logical doesn't require scientific experimentation. Empirical. I would use the word looks. The sky looks blue. The sky looks red. Okay. Then that kills that argument. But anyway. But what I'm saying is there's a different. The sky doesn't necessarily have to be blue in order for that. The argument that I gave you, it's either red or blue. It's not red, therefore it's blue. That's the terminology is it's valid. It doesn't have to be sound, it doesn't have to be actually true, yeah. but it's a logically valid argument. Right, so I would say so you're saying your argument is valid. So my argument is this yeah. this universe was either created or caused itself. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other, yeah? Yes. Okay. And I would lean towards it was created because I don't know anything that can cause itself. Unless but you, you've that. shown logically that it can't cause itself. So you shown logically that it can't cause itself. We already said that you can't have... Um, I'm just working with your argument. So you said that it can't start at a random point. Yes. It has to start at the very first cause. Yes. So you've said logically... Yes. ...that there must be the first cause. Whereas, yes. Whereas um, the empirical side will go, well, let's measure anything and, and go out and try... They try and find for a thousand years something that can't be caused no, but, and do experiments... Well, no one's claiming empiricalism. 
What's my point? So your argument's logical, not empiricist. I never claimed it was empiricist. You're trying to say... But, yeah, so it's no, but you're trying to say the way I reason my belief it, with, when it comes to Creator or Muhammad, peace be upon being a messenger yeah. of God or the Quran being the word of God is somehow different to believing man landed on the moon. I, I think it's... I'm not saying it's, it's any more or less valid. I'm not saying it's any more or less reason. I'm saying it's a different kind of belief. What's the difference? Is it, the difference is that one is 100% sure, without a doubt. Well, so but that's not belief then. then. So what is so yeah, 100% sure? To my original What's 100% sure? 100% sure is there's no, there's not even, there might be, there's no possibility of the other, of the opposite being true. All right, so are you saying to me man landed on the moon is 100% sure? No, I'm saying it's 99% sure. Why is it 99% okay, sure? Okay, for example, if I look up the moon every day, I might be having a hallucination every day of my life, and everyone might be telling me a lie. Now, it's a ridiculous example, which is why I'm saying 99%, but you can never be fully sure. What did you think I just said? You just, have you lost me? Right? I, think, I think we're... <laughs> what are we talking about? I said to you, can you prove man landed on the moon? Moon landed, Neil Armstrong. Yes. Can you prove that happened? I would say no. Right. But you believe it happened? Yes. And you have reasons to believe it happened? Mm. The difference, yeah, I know where you're going, but the difference is my reason is... I'm not going there, I'm there. My, I've been there from no, the beginning. My reason is purely that it just goes over 50% sureness. No, no, no. What it the reason is, is it's 100%. Do you know what the difference is that I am saying that there is a slight possibility that everyone's playing a big no, joke, there are people people, including the moon, and you're saying that there's, no, there's not even a possibility. Well, well, wait, why do you keep saying about the moon playing a joke? The only people who will play the joke on you is NASA, yeah, and the TV companies. Yep. They're the only playing the joke. The moon's not going to play a joke. The moon doesn't have flipping reason and logic and okay, free will. What I'm, what I'm talking about is the fallibility of the senses. And what I'm saying, no, I accept. But no, but you're not believing man landed on the moon because of your senses. Okay. You believe man landed on the moon because someone told you man landed on the moon and they showed you a picture of man landed on the moon and they showed you pictures of the earth from the moon saying this is the earth from the moon. So I can say I believe it. So, you, it but, yeah. What I'm saying is that there is a difference and ideally if our language was perfect we would have two different... But I'm trying to understand this difference, you see, because yeah. your, the, the process you've gone through to believe man landed on the moon is no difference to the process I've gone to for, to believe Mohammed peace of his opponent is a messenger of God. I think that there's no difference. There now you keep saying there is a difference, there is a difference. So yeah. please, 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 please tell me the difference. The reason why I think there's a difference is you've both given me a logical argument for the first cause, right? No, no, forget that now. No, it's, it's not. No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, no, no, no. Why? Because that argument. No, I believe Muhammad is the messenger of God. Let's go with that. Yes, but you, you would you would derive that from if you know for hundred percent sure, no doubt whatsoever, unlike the moon. No doubt that, that there must be a first cause. I believe there's a, there must be a first cause, yes. Yeah, but you've so given me, you me the logic. So it's, there be, if, if someone said you, they don't believe there's a first cause, you'd say you are illogical. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even consider their opinion, right? No, no, that's not true. So your, your problem seems to be with the certainty. You don't believe in a first cause. So how is it 100%? I'm, I'm working with your argument. Well, no, no, if it's 100%, you should believe it. I Do you believe it? No, I don't believe it's 100%. But we're talking you don't believe it's 100%? But wait, we're talking about the nature of belief, not whether the first cause is true. Do you, no, but my belief, you said it's 100% true, so the, the, it's not belief. I'm saying that in order to... Uh, your you said my logic's 100%, view, yes? Wait, you, your worldview is that the first cause argument is not about measuring things and conducting experiments. Logically, it is just valid. That, that doesn't, you don't need any proof because the proof is just in the words. So do you accept that? I don't accept it. But right, I, so, I, no, no. so it's not proof then, is it? Because it's not 100% wait, then, is it? No, no, I don't have to accept it because I would only argue with the logic. There's no way that... You just said it's 100% logical. There is no way that I could do an experiment to prove your prove that statement wrong. There is no experiment that any scientist can conduct because it's not in the realm of empirical evidence. Do you be it's in the realm of logic. Okay. Do you agree that a belief can be true without this evidence? Only by coincidence. Only by coincidence. Unless it's a logical one, in which, in which case the logic is the evidence. So, and there's a lot of problems with the English language. We have different words. No, I understand. The same I'm trying to understand that. What are you about? So, a belief can be true without the proof, yeah? Yes, but only by. For example, if I were to believe that the sky is blue, but the only reason I believe that is when I've, I've been locked in an art gallery my whole life and I've seen blue paintings, that is an actually true belief, but without the justification. No, you've got justification. No, that's, that's not a justification. Of course it is. No, it's not. All the pictures of the sky I've seen is blue. Okay, of so, course it is justification. So similarly, that's, by that's, ridiculous that's example. That's the scientific method. Yeah, exactly. If I've been locked in a, an art gallery my whole life, never seen My God, sky. you've been locked up in all these different I've places. Been locked up too much. Step in. You ain't got no little if cellar I, under your I house of you or something. I've been in an art gallery my whole life and all the paintings had red skies. You'd believe the sky was red. Yeah, but that's a justification. But it doesn't mean it's, the conclusion is true. No one said it is. What are we arguing about? The argument is this. Can a, can a belief be true without proof? 
But there's different kinds of proof. There's empirical and... No, no, forget the proof. There is no proof. Can it still be true? Do you believe there's proof of God? No. So why are you arguing... That why am I, I'm arguing because you said, I don't believe this proof of God. I believe in the existence of God through my reasoning. Okay. You're saying the reasoning I've employed to come to the conclusion that God exists is different to coming to the conclusion that man landed on the moon. Yeah. And I'm asking you again, what's the difference? One is, one is a logical argument that doesn't require any testing. Isn't man landed on the moon a logical argument? No. Really? No. Because why? because of the fallibility of the senses. Every book I read, I'm, have you ever read a book when you're really tired and you remember it the next day, the text, but then you realize you're remembering the wrong thing? The book maybe said the exact opposite. Have you ever watched a film no. and you thought about it 10 years later and you can't remember one of the chapters in the film? I don't understand. No, I, don't, I don't know. Have you ever had a hallucination or a dream? There's no way you can be 100% sure. Okay, that okay. You see. I'll make it easy for you. Is this logical? I believe man landed on the moon. Really? Did you? Were you there? No, I wasn't there. Oh, why do you believe man landed on the moon? Well, according to NASA, yeah, they landed on the moon. According to the TV companies of the time, they landed on the moon. According to history, they landed on the moon. According to the testimony of Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, they landed on the moon. Are you saying it's illogical for me to believe man landed on the moon? I'm saying it's not. Or is it logical? It's not logic. I, don't, I wouldn't use it illogical. So take so, so so it's not logical to take the testimony of those who claim to walk on the moon, take the testimony of those who claim they sent man to the moon. You don't use the word logical. It's say reasonable. If you say it's what's yeah, the difference? Yeah, you're just what's you're the difference? Reasonable is to do with the amount of scrutiny you would exercise in everyday life. But if but if, if me believing in a creator is logical as you claimed it is, Wait, then you should believe it, I, unless you're illogical. I don't mean logical, reasonable as in the adjectives. What I mean is what is based on a proof of logic. For example, with the moon... What's the difference? Okay, I'm, I'm just... I'm here. With the, with the moon argument you gave me. Right. You said, do you believe the testimony of the people who land on the moon? The no, 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 no. That's not it. No. Wait, 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 wait. On, what did I say? All of them could be lying. But yeah, of course no could. a logical argument lies. You can't lie about the... It's logically irrefutable that a unicorn has one horn. Logic, uh, logically irrefutable. Uh, Please, my friend. Yes. What, definition. What's your name? Yep. That's logic. Yes. Mm -hmm. But empirically, we've got no proof at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, that's I agree with you. No, the principle is this. If you're going to come to the conclusion man landed on the moon and you wasn't there, you weren't alive when man landed on the moon, yep. then you would use your logic and reason, yeah? And your logic and reason, no? So I, it's not a question of logic. It's, that's, that's very I, I think at this juncture, I need to understand, how do you understand logic? Logic is something that is irrespective of any evidence because it is a system within itself. Logic is, for example, if P then Q, P therefore Q. That's a logical argument. Whereas whether we landed on the moon would be, okay, so you can have the testimony of NASA, you can have the testimony of Buzz Aldrin, and you can have the history books and the YouTube uh, videos and documentaries on it, but you still only have 99.9% .9 proof because all of those things could be wrong. And how does that... Wait, because a logical argument... Context of discussion. It's infallible. Huh? It's in the never context going of our be discussion, wrong. what does it matter? Yeah, and in the context of our discussion, how, how, how does that apply? I don't get it. In the context of our discussion? Yeah. I'm saying that you're, you're, the first cause argument is a very good example of a pure... Is it 100%? Yeah, it's 100%. It's a so you accept it? I, no, I'm not saying... So it's not 100% then? Wait, the only way that I would disagree with it is by using other logic. I would never do an experiment... Is it 100%? No, no, I, that's not the point. No, is it? Yeah. Wait, I'm talking about the nature of the belief. He's so more you... percentages... No, no, Wait. Listen. no sorry, no, what, what's your name again, sorry? Sebastian. Sebastian, very nice to meet him, man. I'm Darren, yeah? Listen, when it came to man landing on the moon, you were very quick to give us 99.9% .9 whatever. Yeah. Why wouldn't you get a percentage now for my belief? Because what I'm saying... All, there are options where it could be wrong, and it, I could use other evidence. So, for example, if everyone believes that man landed on the moon, right. but I brought you evidence to say that the Apollo 11 rockets couldn't function or couldn't put you into orbit, that would be a reason to doubt the argument. Right, right. Whereas, and that's empirical evidence. Whereas, what you, the only way I'd be able to refute the first cause argument is by using formal logic. Agreed? Yeah, so, so I would be... Do you, do you see the difference, perhaps? If I understood the first cause argument right now, I could go and sit in my room for a year, never go outside, never read a book, and I could just think and write down the logical reasons for disagreeing or agreeing with it. Whereas if I wanted to find out whether man lands on the moon, I would have to go to the science museum, I have to go and talk to people, and so the nature of proof in the two different cases is different. One is empirical evidence, and one is pure logic. Logic doesn't require anyone else to believe in it, logic doesn't require evidence from scientists or from science itself. Whereas landing on the moon um, requires you to believe in other people. So, 
just to take this to its seems natural conclusion, me believing in an uncaused cause of everything that exists is logical. That's why I thought. Okay, I'll take that. But, but you're, say, you're saying you're saying you're saying that. You're saying, so, I'm saying if you believe in the first cause argument, then it's logical. The nature of your belief is purely logical. Alhamdulillah.